Welcome to Shamba Shepa. We have traveled all over East Africa to find hard-working farmers. We want to celebrate them while giving them the knowledge they need. So they can adapt and make their farms more productive even while the climate changes. We want to support them to get better yields and increase their income. We meet families and enter their kitchens to explore how to cook in cleaner, faster, cheaper ways while at the same time increasing family nutrition. We will see how farmers from across the region can benefit from our experts' advice while also learning from each other in so many ways. Join us on these journeys and share in the farmers' experience as they shape up their shambas on the Shamba Shape Up Safari. <laughs> Welcome to Shamba Shepa. Today we are in Meru County. And we are visiting a farmer who is building up. And wants to give back both at the same time. Because he runs a farm and wants to increase his yield. And runs a children's home who of course need food. We want to see how he can help the farmer. And the children. Two good deeds are the prize of one. Let's go. Let's go. The Harvester Academy Children's Home is a passion project for the farmers we are visiting today. They are currently helping over 50 children. The children might play hard, but they equally work hard too. And growing children need a lot of food. That's right. So, today we are visiting children's home managers, Margaret and Alfred Muthomi, and their son, John Paul, on their shamba. They've been planning next season's planting with the needs of the children's home in mind. Very nice to be here. Thank Show you. us your shamba. Okay. Yeah, this way. Oh, it's okay. this way. Yeah. All right. Okay. Let's okay. All right. All right. Our farmers grow bananas. Children love this. And they have avocado trees. I'm sure we can help improve this, Carol. And here's the maize crop. Now, I wonder what our farmers thought when they heard we were coming. The previous night before you came, I underslept. I was wondering what uh, the day will look like. I was shocked. I said, yeah. You know, my husband came singing, Shamba Shepa up your way. Sema, so what are you talking about? So he said, Shamba Shepa up, they are coming. Sema, what? How? And it was a big surprise. Well, we like to surprise people, don't we, Caro? That's half the fun, Tony. Now, let's see how we can help. What gives me sleeplessness is when we don't have enough harvest. You've spent a lot planting. So now if there's a drought, our mass kind of disaster and everything is wiped out. Okay. So we, we are really scared of that. I see you are really very keen on planting fruits. Yes, uh -huh. but I didn't know. <laughs> is uh, my soil are good for avocados? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's my challenge. Because uh, before yeah. I invest something, uh -huh. I want to be very sure. Wow. That, uh, very wise, yes. very, very wise. <laughs> but fear not, Shamba Shepap is here. Oh, okay. And we've come with our experts, Caro. Oh, yes. Yes. We are so grateful. We need to give us time because we need to pitch up our tent and get to work. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Thank yes. you. We'll see you later. We'll see you in a bit. All right. Thank All right. You. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so let's pitch the tent and get ready for work. Caro, yes, Tony. What do you think? I don't know what your expectations for the day are. Very high, very high. And Caro, what do you think of our farmers? Oh my! I love them. I respect them. And we, as Chamba Shape Up, want to do something extra special to just make sure these kids don't lack something to eat. They say the soil is the heart of the Shamba. So first, I want to make sure their soil is tested. I'm looking forward to some bit of water harvesting. But you know what, Caro? I've hmm. not done that in a while. But John Paul, Alfred's son, is tech savvy, ah. and I'm sure he and Karis can help me set up and make sure they are. What harvesting system is working? So Tony kindly allow me to go have the soil tested. Mm -hmm. I'll catch up with you later. All right, Karis. Right? Later. Later. Our farmers are keen to grow tomatoes next season. To get a big crop, the first thing we need to do is a soil test. So we've asked Anthony Oduor from Fadili, Africa, to visit. He first collects the soil in a zigzag manner from across the field. He then mixes the soil samples and is now ready to analyze using an AgroCare scanner. The scanner can give results in just 15 minutes. 
So, Anthony, why is it important to do a soil test? Uh, first, it shows the amount of nutrients that is in your soil. Okay. Secondly, it, it will give a recommendation in which the type of fertilizer that we'll be using mm -hmm. and the exact amount of the fertilizer that we'll be able to use. Okay. And then fourthly, a soil test can be able to increase your yield if you follow the recommendation to the letter. Oh. Yes. Okay. So, are we ready for the results? Yes. Let's do it. Okay. Oh, there you are. It's printing already. Okay. There we are. I was uh, surprised that it can take uh, such a uh, short time. I thought it's something that someone waits for a month, but now if it takes uh, 15 minutes, that's a very record time. So, Anthony, yes. what do we have here? Mm -hmm. uh, actually, the pH is very low. It gives us the pH level, which is 5.0. Your nitrogen also is very low. What uh, does that mean? Uh, because it's the growth element. Mm -hmm. And when they are low, basically your production will definitely go low. Mm. Yes. So basically you'll have to lime your land, three bags of lime, that's 150 kg lime. Mm. And you also need to add another fertilizer, the nitrogen fertilizer, to address the nitrogen deficiency. So uh, is this piece of land now uh, good for growing tomatoes? Definitely, when you go through the recommendation mm. and follow it appropriately, you'll have to have your maximum yield for this piece of land. Mm -hmm. Yes. And for our farmers, if you're looking for a soil test, kindly get in touch with iShamba. Now, my first job today is to help Alfred's son, John Paul, with his drip irrigation system. Last year, John Paul's vegetables did not do well. Now, let's see how we can help. Hey, John Paul. Oh, hello, Tony. <laughs> what happened here? Well, I had a very good idea of using drip irrigation mm -hmm. to enhance my farming. Then? <laughs> oh, when the dry season came in, my crops dried up. Uh -huh. I did not have enough water. What do you plan to plant then? We had a soil test in this farm and they told me it is very good to do tomatoes. I'm intending to plant tomatoes. Yes, and you know tomatoes require lots of water. Lots and lots of water. You get lots of rains here sometimes. Yes, this place has got a lot of rain. I was thinking if we could have something here which can trap all that rain water. Oh yeah, that, that's a good idea. Yeah. Yes, and I saw a nice roof somewhere. I think I can see it from here. Oh, there at the cow shed? It's very high up there. It can ah, trap all the water. Let's have, have an idea a, of let's that. Let's go have a look and see what we can do with that. We go. Okay, we go. go. I'm very excited because I have been having challenges to do with water. As you know, last season I planted uh, sweet potatoes. They all dried up because I did not have enough water. So I was looking forward for a great way to have enough water for my crops. We still have so much to do. So while Caris goes to get the materials we need to build the rainwater harvesting system, I'm going to find Alfred and see how we can help him with his avocado trees. Alfred has five avocado trees he bought from the roadside, but they are not doing so well. We suspect they might have a disease called Phytophthora, commonly known as root rot. So I'm going to take him to meet Bridget, the nursery manager at Olivado. She's keen to explain to Alfred how a certified nursery like Olivado's can provide farmers with seedlings free from diseases. And this is the Olivado factory. As we arrived, we found Bridget giving some visiting farmers a tour of Olivado. Now, the key with successful avocado farming, as with all things in life, is starting correctly. I have learned in the nursery that when planting their seedlings, they first sterilize the soil by heating it to 70 degrees. This kills any diseases. Ah, I see the group is moving off. So now is our chance to talk to Bridget and hear all about Olivado's nursery. Welcome to our nursery. All right. Keeping the nursery free from pests and diseases is the number one priority. So before we enter, we first wash our hands and then dip our feet in the disinfectant foot bath. Here we are. Let's go in. Wow. Wow. This looks good. Bridget. Yes. Where are we now? It's our high health nursery, oh. free from the diseases. And very secure. Yes. Alfred, mm. look at this. Is this what you'd like to see in your chamber? Yeah, definitely. Ah, uh, looks very nice. I'm wondering how uh, she keeps now diseases out of uh, now the seedlings. Mm -hmm. yes. Because uh, she treated the soil, mm -hmm. but now when the seedlings are here, mm -hmm. how do you keep the diseases away? One. We have closed it there. Oh, okay. So most of the time I don't allow visitors in. Yes. Two, we do a random testing after grafting. Oh, okay. Three times. 
Olivado have a lab that can check the seedlings they sell to ensure they have no diseases such as phytophthora or root rot. It's a serious problem as it can spread and farmers can lose the entire orchard. Ah, Alfred. Yes. Would you like to take some seedlings from here? Yeah, definitely. Why? They are looking very good. Let's see how many we can take. Okay. Yes. All right, yeah. let's go. Let's go and okay. take it. So, Alfred is convinced, and so am I. Buying seedlings from a certified nursery guarantees your plants will grow well. But still, good farming practices must be followed. So, Bridget is going to show us the best way to plant the seedlings. So, one, we are going to dig a home, mm -hmm. two by two feet. Why should the hole be two by two? The seedling and the root will just spread the way they are supposed to be. They are not going to coil. Digging holes with enough room for the roots to grow ensures the tree will grow big and strong. Today, we are planting the Hass variety of avocado. So, the holes should be spaced five meters apart, plant to plant, and five meters row to row. When digging the hole, keep the topsoil and the subsoil underneath separate. The topsoil is more fertile, so that's what we'll use to plant. When the hole is dug, mix just the topsoil with a bucket of well-decomposed manure and fill the hole back. So from there, what you usually do, you just use your hands mm -hmm. to dig up another hole. At the center of the big hole, you take your seedling, you remove the potting bag. Again, you just plant your... Then you return the subsoil? It's just around. A simple start. So if you want to water, mm. assume it's a dry season, mm. you just make a small dam outside, just a small dam. Oh, okay. Then you put water. Yes. Now, from this seedling, yes. with all good management, management what should Alfred expect in terms of harvest? The next two years, three years, we'll be having the first fruits. Oh, okay. Until 70 years. 70, 70 years. years? Yes. Wow, 70 years of avocado production. And with an average tree producing from 300 kilograms up to one ton per season, the children's home will have plenty of good, healthy fruits to eat. And our farmers can make a healthy profit from what's left over. Wow, there you are, Tony. So far, so good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've learned a lot. And there's still much more to come, right here on Chamba Shape Up. Welcome back to Shamba Shape Up. We are in Meru and we are visiting farmers and children's home managers, Margaret and Alfred Muthomi. We have seen how to choose avocado seedlings and the best way to plant them. But we also want to find out how the good management of fodder crops can lead to increased milk yield. And how to avoid losses on the farm due to crop failure. So Tony, no time to waste. Let's get back to work. Now, first I'm going back to check on the rainwater harvesting system that the Shamba Shape Up team has been installing with Alfred's son, John Paul. The tank is here, and the gutters and the downpipes have arrived as well. Next, we want to fix them to the roof so we can catch all that lovely, clean rainwater. And I can see Cariz is doing a good job. And with John Paul helping out too, I'm sure we'll soon be finished. Rainwater harvesting has so many benefits. It can reduce flooding and erosion by controlling the water runoff and holding it in the tanks. It will reduce water bills, sometimes by as much as 100% for large systems. And it doesn't have to be expensive to install either. John Paul. Hello, Tony. We've just finished putting the gutter up, as you can see. Good. Looking great. Keep it up. Good luck. With the rainwater harvesting going well, it's now my turn to help out by improving the cow's milk yield. So, I'm bringing Frederick Muthomi from SEAT, the International Center for Tropical Agriculture, to meet Alfred. Alfred is using Bracaria to feed his cows, but their milk production is below expectations. So we've asked Frederick to first take a look at the field where the Bracaria is growing to see if that's where the problem is. 
So, Alfred, yes. mm. so what challenges do you face? One of the challenges is that uh, during the dry season, mm -hmm. it's turning yellow. About the, the turning of yellowish and then uh, brown, it's an issue of uh, some insects called the red spider mite oh. attacking during the dry season. And one way of the farmer can be able to identify the rendy spider mite, mm -hmm. you just need to check your field. Mm -hmm. uh, when you, you pluck the leaf, yes. which has been affected, mm -hmm. you can see this one is a, a little bit yellowish. Mm -hmm. So you need to check on the lower side mm -hmm. very closely oh, okay. because the rendy spider mites are very tiny. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can see uh, the yeah. small yeah. insects yes. which yeah. are moving. And they are yeah, moving. Oh yeah. my. Yes. And now oh, these are the rendy spider mites. Are the spider mites dangerous? Is it okay if we leave them when the bracaria is brown? Yeah. Is it bad for the cows or it's just fine? So one of the problems is that the paratability, the way the cows like that grass, mm -hmm. now they, they don't like anymore. When you are forage are affected, mm. even the nutrition of value itself deteriorates. What are the solutions? Uh, one thing that uh, Alfred can do, if he can have irrigation once in a week, mm -hmm. because oh. the rainy spider mites are not comfortable with the watering. They don't like water. <laughs> they don't like water. Uh -huh. mm. yes. uh, what else have you observed in our bracaria field? Yeah, when I look around, I see a lot of species. So it means that uh, in this field, our friend has not been able to maximize uh -huh. on the plot because the population of the grass is not optimal. Yeah. So simply it means maximizing the space so that you can get maximum yield. Maximum yield. yield. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Yeah. What are the solutions? Mm. It needs to adopt the right spacing. One by from one row to another, okay. you can use for 5 centimeters. Oh, okay. And then from one plant to the next at a spacing of 30 centimeters. So to recap, Inspect grasses regularly for red spider mite. Look on the underside of the leaves. If you do spot red spider mite, cut before they spread further. And water every two weeks. Red spider mites hate water. As a last resort for really bad cases, you can spray with an insecticide. If you do feed the grass to your cows, don't worry, they won't be harmed. But they don't like eating it, and the nutrient level will be low which can affect the milk yield. What other challenges do you face? We've been cutting it, of course, and taking it to the cows direct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, sometimes uh, when we finish it, there's no more grass for the cows. You don't have any that you've stored? No, we've not been doing that. Uh -huh. Yes. For the case of Alfred, he has about four animals in the shed. Mm -hmm. So it means with the half an acre of bracadia, the animals cannot be able to utilize all the bracadia mm -hmm. using the cut and carry mm -hmm. system. Mm -hmm. So what Alfred means to do is that he means to preserve. Because when he leaves the grass for too long in the field, they overgrow. Mm -hmm. If you check on this grass, oh my. It's already too tall, you see? Mm -hmm. So if he could have cut this grass at the right stage, mm -hmm. it means there could be more grass, almost the same size as this. Uh -huh. And this grass now, you see, it's so fibrous. Mm -hmm. The animals don't like it. The nutrient level for this grass is very low. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. yeah. What is the best time to cut the grass? A sure way that you can be able to tell that your grass is ready for harvest is that you see your grass starting to flower. And then the best uh, height that you cut your grass mm. is about 5 to 10 centimeters from the ground. Okay. Yeah, so you must leave uh, like a hand's height mm -hmm. from the ground. Right, so let's show Alfred how to preserve his grass by making hay bales. Then his livestock can have nutritious and tasty fodder throughout the year. First, build a wooden frame like this. The frame should be 3 feet long by 2 feet wide by 1 and a half feet high. Then place some string ties inside the frame. The string should be laid out like this. Next, add the grass. It should be well dried. This takes around three to four days in the sun. Compact down as much as you can. You can even jump on top like me. But the heavier you are, the better. Okay, now once you've squeezed in as much as you can, tie the string and pull out. You're done. Good work, team. Uh, that one will be very helpful because now sometimes we have a lot of uh, fodder, especially now it has uh, rained. If we are able to store that, then that means we are able to have uh, fodder for the livestock throughout the year. Welcome to the Shamba Shape Up Farming News for Kenya. In the coming week, we expect lots of rain across most parts of Kenya. However, northeastern Kenya, including Mandera, Wajia and Isiolo, will be dry with rains of less than 15 millimeters in some areas. 
Lower Eastern, including Garissa and Tana River, will receive between 15 to 50 millimeters of rain. Coastal region, including Lamu, Kilifi, Mombasa, and Kwale, will have 25 to 75 millimeters of rain. Taita Taveta may get rains above 75 millimeters. The majority of central, Mount Kenya region, and surrounding counties, including Laikipia, Meru, Nyeri, Nyandarwa, expect rain above 50 millimeters. The same goes for Nairobi, Machakos, and Kiambu. Tarakanithi, Embu, and Kirinyaga expect similar rain of 50 millimeters and above. With such high levels of rain, make sure to trap water off your roof and store in a tank for when it gets drier. South Rift Valley, Central Rift, and Mid-North Rift Valley, including Kajiado, Narok, Bomet, Nakuru, Kericho, and Nandi, as well as Transzoia, Elgeyo Marakwet, and Wasingishu, expect rain of over 50 mm, with some parts having rains above 75 mm. Western and Nyanza regions also expect rain of 50 mm and above. Counties included Arbungoma, Kakamega, Siaya, Vihiga, Kisumu, Homabay, Migori, Kisi, and Nyamira. Farmers, the long rains are here. Always plant kefis, certified seed, for your area. Get in touch with Aishamba if you're not sure. Call 0711-082-606. See you next week on the Shamba Shape Up Farming News. Meanwhile, back at the feed shed, the rainwater harvesting system is coming on really well. Hey, John Paul. Hello, Tony. How is it going? Ah, the going is great. This, I believe, it will be very enough for my drip irrigation. Amazing. And even some more water for my other uses. A lot, a lot of benefit. Yeah, and uh, it looks cloudy. I can't <laughs> wait. I'll come back later and check. Thank you. All right, all okay. right. Right. Now, while John Paul finishes up, I'm going to introduce his parents to a new low-cost way to protect crops and livestock from disaster. We've asked Joseph Chege from Eka Insurance and local farmer Paul Kiogora to tell us all about it. It's a special kind of insurance that is both simple and cheap. Paul bought the same insurance last season and made a claim. So... We are looking forward to hearing his story. Now, we're going to discuss an issue that affects all farmers in their shambas when it comes to their crops. What happened, we had planted maize for almost two acres, but we only got one bag of maize. <gasps> it was terrible. One bag from two acres? In actual fact. Alfred, yes. is that what happened? What, yeah. did you, what did you do to the maize? <laughs> what happened? What happened is that we planted when the rains uh, came, mm. but now the rains uh, lasted for just a month. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so after that one month, it was very dry. That was a total loss? Yeah, it yeah. was. And Paul, you planted at the same time as well? Yeah, during the same period. And you're a neighbor around here? Yeah, yeah. And you know our farmers? Very well. Uh -huh. And well. you look happier than they are <laughs> with your oh, harvest? No. Yeah. <laughs> uh, climate change is a reality and you're seeing rainfall not coming in a um, sufficient amount. And sometimes when it comes, it comes in excess and actually causing damage to our crops. So Joseph, what do you have for our farmers today? Today we have good news, and uh, I've come to tell our farmers uh, they should not worry anymore because we have simplified access of our insurance products. Mm -hmm. Using your phone, you can access and buy uh, insurance products, and this is going to cover you for drought and excessive rainfall. Yeah. All what you need to do, we have agents in these uh, areas or where we have farming activities, and they'll come with this type of a card. That looks like uh, the card for loading airtime in your phone and you will scratch here and it comes in different uh, values. We have uh, the lowest going for 50 shillings and the highest going for 1,000 uh, shillings. This one for 1,000 covers you for 7,500. The lowest, the one that is uh, for 50 shillings, enables you to pay in bits. Say for instance you want to buy insurance for the coming season and you don't have money. What do you do? You can buy these in bits and when the time for planting comes, you just activate all of them. If your farm experiences a depressed rains or rainfall coming uh, in uh, excess and causing damage to your crop, then uh, we are able to do the analysis and uh, uh, process compensation. And I think that's what uh, uh, my farmer, who has basically experienced uh, this kind of a product, will be able to explain. I came to know about the product through online, mm -hmm. and I started farming, wanting to know that how can I farm and get 100%. 
Mm -hmm. I came about insurance. So I got the 1,000 card. How big was your shamba? It's then? one acre. Uh -huh. yes. So what did you do? So I got the card, I scratched, I entered the USD code. It prompted me to an M M Pesa menu. I paid. Uh -huh. As you have heard, rains didn't come. Uh, maize didn't perform quite well, but I got a payout. That was good news for me, for my young family. We were very happy. So you so, got compensated? So I got compensated. Ah. Yeah, through my mobile phone, I got compensated. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. Yes. Paul bought a 1,000 shilling card for one acre. That gave him cover for 7,500 shillings. As there was 72% less rain than expected, his payout was 72% of 7,500. That's 5,400 shillings. I just want to get to know when do I have to start. When you want to buy insurance, you're supposed to come and buy insurance when you're planning to plant or even before you start planting. Uh, but when it comes to activation of insurance, uh, you will wait until the day you're planting because back end we are able to get the planting date. And we start monitoring rainfall in your farm from that date all the way to the harvesting period. And then uh, if, I'd say for instance, the germination phase, uh, you don't receive uh, enough rainfall, then we are able to know. And then uh, within a period of uh, 14 to 21 days, you receive your compensation. Remember when you're activating, we go to your phone number. We get the MPESA number and then process compensation at the end of the season. I'm also wondering whether there are particular crops that yeah. you insure. Any mm. crop that is of commercial value, mm. it's insured. Joseph, yes, Tony. how can farmers get access to this service? You can also go through Aishamba and mm. I will be able to, to assist you. Sounds Very good. good. So if you do that, next time there will be no... Yes, if yeah, mm. yeah, 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 yeah. farm without any worries. Yeah, sure. Um, you'll have peace of mind, basically. That's what oh. we do. We actually make sure that farmers uh, have the confidence to invest in their farms because they're covered and all the risks have been taken care of. Mm. Okay. Thank you so oh. much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And thank you, Paul, the good neighbor. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, our farmers are very happy with the crop insurance. Now, I'm wondering what their son, John Paul, is going to think about the rainwater harvesting. It's all finished and just needs testing. Wow, rent of water is working. I'm very excited. Now that Shamba Shepherd came here, they have heard me know how to harvest water. And now my crops will grow very well. I'm not, not worried about water anymore. <laughs> I'm really very happy because now I will not have sleepless nights. We'll be able to ensure our crops. That is a very good thing. I've learned a lot because I've been doing uh, farming, but now I think I can do it better. I want to produce uh, more so that I can be able to feed uh, uh, my children. Even have a surplus which I can sell and be able to pay for their school fees and other expenses uh, which are required. So the advice that we have got from the Shamba Shepherd will take us a great mile, some, a distance. 